Hello, welcome. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Hangry Mexican. She is a writer, comedian, actor, content creator. It's almost like she does it all. Her name is Joanna Gajo. Uh, you probably recognize her from projects like Living with Latinos, uh, where she did several sketches, uh, played different characters, or maybe you have heard of Joanna through her character, La Comadre Pancha. Very funny. She is hilarious, uh, witty, smart. And when I heard that she was uh, going to be on this podcast, I was just so delighted because I think that she is one of those pioneers that are moving the ball forward when it comes to working in the digital space and being quite successful at it. So let's get started. And DJ, where are you, DJ? Oh, there you are. Roll that music. First, you know, I was looking at your Instagram uh, account and, uh, you know, it's Mother's Day today uh-huh. and it was mexican mother's day on friday so how did you celebrate that correct mother's day you know what it's so special and i'm so over- <laughs> i i overthink it because uh, my mom is uh we don't live in the same city so um i try to send something that she likes or or something but it I don't know how to guess with her. She doesn't tell me. She's one of those moms, you know, they're like, Ma, what do you want? She speaks Spanish. Can I speak Spanish here? Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay, definitely. She's like, Ma, porque for me it's ama. <laughs> ama, ¿qué vas a querer el día de las madres? Nada. So she's always with a nothing. But so it's so hard to, to guess what she likes. So I got her some concert tickets. And she wanted like some diet pills, but I didn't get her that. So just something, summer's coming, so some shades and stuff, and send her some flowers because, I mean, what would we be without our mamas, right? And Uh yeah, so like every time I visit her, at least if she's like, here, llévate esto, take some taquitos for the road, do this, do something. She's always trying to help. So, I mean, like how can I give her something and that means so to someone who means so much to me. So I'm like, oh, what should I do? What about you? <laughs> um, well, I uh, I went to go visit my mom yesterday, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, since I I couldn't today, but we also live in different cities mm-hmm. uh, now. And um, you know, ever, growing up, she would always uh, 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 you know create these elaborate Mexican dishes that I'm trying to recreate now, but it's kind of oh. hard. It's <laughs> It's not like she kept a recipe book. It's just, you know, out of memory. She just did it. Oh, yeah. And, you know, Mexican moms. I do it myself, too. Like, we don't follow instructions. We just, like, it. you got it or you don't. You got to add the seasoning on el sazón. Yeah, Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and so uh, a few weeks ago when I was over at her place, uh, she made mole, chicken mole. Mm. And I took a picture of it, and Mm -hmm. uh, I forgot to actually post it then. And I figured, you know what? It's Mexican Mother's Day, Friday. I might as well uh, post it. It's great. And so I posted that, and then she calls me up. Right? She uh, Mm -hmm. she sees the she's on Instagram. She's on Instagram, and and she and and she calls me, uh, and I answer the phone, and she says, "Uh, "Hey, Mijo, where? When did you eat mole?" And and uh, and she thought it was a recent picture, uh-huh. and and I told her, "Don't you recognize it's your mom? <laughs> it's your mom." No. You're the one it. I just took a picture of it, but it's so it, it was it was so funny. She called me, called me so concerned, like like almost like if I was cheating on her with some yeah. other. Yeah. <laughs> She was like, "Donde comiste? It's not mine. <laughs> it's your mom. It's yours. Yeah. That's so cute." <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I gave her some flowers, of course. Um, so every, everything was good. That's how I celebrated it, and uh, with a little call from her afterwards too. Yeah, and, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, so so that that's great though. That um, uh, I think 
you know, they tell, they kind of, they, in a way, I think they almost guilt you into getting them yes. something. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I'm, I'm, ta- uh-huh. I'm trying to decipher what you want. And then, but I, I just tell me, please. <laughs> and then if you don't get them anything, they're like, mm, no me hizo nada. <laughs> so I'm just planning a surprise, like a, a surprise for her birthday, like something like I'll take her to the beach or something, you know? Yeah. Oh, but, there you go. There you but, go. But, but yeah, it's funny. It's like, I don't want anything. No, no quiero nothing, nothing. I do it <laughs> in my character, La Comadre Pancha, too. Like, nothing. And then when the moment comes, mm, no se acordaron de mí. They didn't, you know, <laughs> the guilt. <laughs> it's like, come on, I've been asking. <laughs> uh, exactly. Well, and I'm glad you mentioned Comadre Pancha because uh, mm-hmm. that's one of... Um, it's one of the characters that you played, and I know you played a lot on on other things that you've done. But mm-hmm. this this character in particular stuck around. So, what was uh, what was the inspiration behind that, and and how is it that he became one of like the most beloved characters that you stuck with? Uh, well, thank you for the question. Um, La Comadre Pancha started in. I am from Mexicali, Mexico. It's a very small town, and you know when it, you live in a small town, a lot of people know each other, and the gossip goes very very <laughs> broad oh, so yeah. um so you have all these people that are very chismosa they play the double discourse they love criti- criticizing people but they don't really look at themselves so i see a, a <laughs> comadre pancha was it's for me like a way uh, to make a satire of our own society you know like uh, especially she is uh, a single mother uh and her son is um, gay, but she doesn't accept it because society doesn't seem <laughs> like a, yeah. in a church. What will people say? You know, she's so, so afraid of what will people say. But in, mm-hmm. and she pretends to be religious and be the best of the best. But at the same and at, at the same time, like she has all these flaws. Like sometimes she has, she's sometimes she can be homophobic. Sometimes she can be like racist sometimes like, but it's, is the way to take the, the small minded person. Like mm-hmm. and she's learning through her videos, like, Hey, this is wrong. You know, like, Oh, like mm, to, she's learning to be woke. Let's say. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and in a major- very satirical way. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, oh, no. I was uh-huh. just gonna say that's the interesting thing. Uh, the interesting thing about the the Latino culture, the you know, especially uh, with the the Mexicanos, where uh, you know we like to uh, say things that are probably not acceptable in 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 modern society, especially here oh, in the United yeah. States. But but we do it almost not even knowing, like being ignorant on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it just it kind of makes it ignorance. funny. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, very humble. Exam- oh, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say very, very humble, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, people is, is what I was going to say because yeah, we do, we just, we, we talk without really knowing um, what, what really truly we're seeing or how it's coming across. And so that's how, that's how my mom is too. Like she, you know, she, she just says like, Mijo, man, you gain fat, man. You got fat. And then you gotta, you gotta, you gotta work out. And, and then, it, but the, and she, she criticizes me for, uh, f- you know, sometimes I, 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 yeah, uh, I, uh, post photos of, you know, some pretty healthy stuff that I'm eating, like, you know, salads or and immediately, or something. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then at the same time, she says like, man, that, uh, Mijo, that stuff's going to like make you sick and, uh, and all this yeah. and that. And, and you're going to get diabetes. And, and then, uh, and I tell her, yeah, but you're, you're, you're in the meantime, you're eating like, like arroz con leche and like buñuelos with a pinole and mm-hmm. like really saturated in sugar. I mean, what's that? So it's, just, it's yeah. so funny. We always have that member of the family who's like, uh, ay, te estás poniendo gordita, you're getting fat, but come, porque, why are you going to eat no carbs? No vas a comer tortillas, here, eat more, eat more. Or like, uh, <laughs> you know, like, um, if you're trying a new diet or something that it doesn't go like, oh, I'm vegan, oof, like, <laughs> they get hurt. <laughs> but you just told me I was fat. No, 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 come, eat. Yeah, but we all have that. Uh, talk, uh, taking it back to La Comadre Pancha, we all have that tia in that sense, uh, or that, or sometimes yourself. You know that you can say something from that in your culture seem okay, but then you realize like, oh, 
this is not very PC. <laughs> like, this is not very right. Like, every, you have a tia who calls every Asian person a chinito. Mm-hmm. She'll be that person. Or like, oh, como que, like, because it, it's very into the gossip, you know? And re- But when where, where I want to take the character is that she's a, a person with all these flaws that comes from a very small town, uh, from a, a very ignorant and poor socioeconomic status, but and very religious mm-hmm. that through her experiences in every video, uh, she will be learning something, you know, like learning yeah. why is it wrong that, that her son has to fake a, a, a girlfriend for Christmas dinner or like, why can't he be himself? You know, like mm-hmm. why can she accept that, that her husband left her? And, yeah. and so Things like that that we see in our families that are relatable to like our situations, but I want I don't want to make fun of people who are like that. I want to make I think that's why people like her because I every day she's learning about something new, you know, and mm-hmm. she's opinionated regardless because you know it's very hard to make comedy nowadays. Then uh, there's been people who don't don't understand satire and uh it's very hard to make comedy because everything it, it, anything you say can be taken <laughs> the wrong way yeah so they can spin it off and and with her i mean i i say what i what i want but there's always a purpose of learning i don't want to make fun of anybody but i it's a way to pro to show um our culture our family, our our traditions, but with a purpose. Let's say like that. <laughs> yeah, and it, well, did you always know that you wanted to be a comedian? You know what? Uh, I don't know. I didn't know that career existed when I was growing up. I didn't know like you had a chance to do this and to do that. I like I come from a very low socioeconomic status, <laughs> so I come from that small town and. I remember seeing videos, you know, you remember those tape recorders that were so heavy and you would put in your sh- on your shoulder? Oh, I'm talking yeah. about the 90, 90s one that, oh my God, they were so heavy. So like I would put it on and as a kid st- uh, start making shows like, hey, welcome, welcome to my pencil. What am I going to draw today? <laughs> I don't know where those videos are. And so I was the oldest of, of three girls in a and my mom was a single mom. So like <laughs> I had a lot of time by myself <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and a lot of energy. So I, um, I was just always, um, if we needed to say a recital in school, I was the one doing the recital. If we needed to do a dance, I was the one, as long as there was a stage, I was there, <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't realize it until later, like um, my way to get out, coming to the U.S. And because I was born here, but I didn't live here until later mm-hmm. in, in life. So it was through education and I got I had to focus on that. But later I started doing like theater and started doing and I'm talking later, like when I was 18, I was like, OK, I graduated high school. Time to do some acting and theater as a hobby in the meantime i was um in the meantime i was uh going to university i have a master's in history (laughs) oh wow and and i with that i got to travel a lot academically and 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 do a lot of a lot of uh research and uh, great stuff but and i never left the being like involved in in acting or doing comedy and stuff and and now creating my own content and because there was time I was teaching at SDSU <laughs> history. It's like, okay, it's time. It's time to do this full time. Uh, and I'm talking about being a, a comedian and actor and stuff. And I mean, it's hard, but, but yeah, I've always knew I liked this, that I could do it. It wasn't an option. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I can until later in life. And look, I'm in my 30s and I'm barely being able. I still have my day job, but I'm, I'm barely like, OK, uh, getting out there, you know, I feel. <laughs> well, and, and you know, it's it's um, I imagine it must be uh, 
a, a really interesting observation that you probably made early on where where uh if you know if it wasn't you maybe your parents and i know my parents grew up watching those old mexican films and you know you have uh successful comedians like like cantinflas and and mm-hmm. others that that are actually you know male but then all of a sudden mm-hmm. you get this breakout star with la india maria for example mm-hmm. and uh and so how uh, what was the if there was any inspiration when you watched these films uh, that that included, you know, characters like like La India Maria that that are breakthrough uh, comedians in Mexican cinema that that kind of helped you move along the way. Well, well did they actually help you, mm-hmm. inspire you to go into uh, the comedy world full time as a as a woman? Yeah, it is. It is very interesting you asked that because um, when growing up, there weren't many Mexican comedians, female Mexican comedians doing this. Mm-hmm. I remember La India Maria, as you mentioned. I remember a lot Anabel mm-hmm. because Anabel was more of the Carol Burnett. I grew up in the in La Frontera in the in in the border. So I had, even though I didn't speak English, I would see what Carol was doing. I would see like, I love Lucy. I would see American TV shows, even though I didn't understand it. I would see like the, the type of comedy, you know, read into it. Um, whether in Mexico, we had a lot of it, the, the comedy was very popular and still is like, whenever I want to pitch something, they always want sexy involved in it. Like, mm-hmm. Oh, you know, like um, like anything Jorge Ortiz de Pineda, me, and me, and all the women were sexualized. Mm-hmm. So I didn't want to do that. But um, I like India Maria. It was, it was a stereotype, but I liked that she was able to do what she did. And even though you like it or not, what these female comedians did, it opened a door for you to create mm-hmm. something, you know? Annabelle, I really liked. Um, it was the I like clean comedy. I don't like like um, to do. I, I I like to observe all kinds of comedy, <laughs> <laughs> but to do I don't like uh, to be sexualized just for the purpose of a laugh. I like I like people thinking about something, you know, and creating social uh, commentary about it. But. Um, but yeah, so I grew up looking at that. I think Derbez did a, a wonderful thing. It's not a female, but I like what he did with like Familia Peluche and stuff. It was, uh, he gathered pieces from other places like Monster's Family, like here and there and put it together, put together something that is very watchable, very relatable and, and like, and clean. Um, of course, Chespirito, you know? Very, I love physical comedy and Chespirito. What like um, Bolaños did it was very clean. I mean, to be able to be seen, dude, like in so many countries, translated to so many languages, and and still be he's our Shakespeare of comedy in Mexico. You know, like I was like, oh, he's really good. Um, do you know who I'm talking about? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I I used to to watch it uh, religiously. <laughs> yeah, like it doesn't matter how old you are, and even still, I talk to my niece, and she knows who she who he is. You know, like oh yeah, el chavo or something. <laughs> but um, people who I really I really liked uh, watching American television and comedians like I love Lucy, the Carol Burnett show. Uh, even though I didn't speak. English, I was like, oh, this is cool. <laughs> yeah, and those actually were physical comedians, if you mm-hmm. will. They they were very an uh, SNL upstar. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, you were saying sorry. No, no, I was just um, pointing out that that these two women that you mentioned, Carol Burnett and then Lucy, they're very physical mm-hmm. in their comedy, and and it makes it just elevates the game in a world where. Where, where yeah. uh, you know, male comedians kind of dominated that field. Yeah. And so now, now going back to your comedy, uh, you, it seems, <laughs> it seems and, and it seems like you've drawn from uh, little bits from all these, you know, inspirations to create your own comedy. Or is there one, um, one um, 
inspiration out there, one one comedian that you admire that you kind of based your your comedy around? Um, there's not a particular one that I I I'm like, oh, okay, I, I'm gonna try to imitate that or not imitate, but like draw my comedy from off from because mm-hmm. I believe like we all have individual experiences and one way to create comedy is is to see what what makes you special or like what makes people laugh but tells your story at the same time so i don't have i love the chapelle i love ricky gervais i love uh, british comedy as well Mm -hmm. but i don't have the same experiences they have you know, mm-hmm. and we're not going to have the same, even though we, we still can talk about an issue like, Oh, deciding what to eat today. It won't be the same experience. So I, Oh, oh I love Gabriel Iglesias as well. Like I think those three are doing so good <laughs> this year. I would love to see like more female comedy. Um, but in in terms of design, uh, design making a decision what my comedy is like. I'm still I'm I'm writing a web series because I want to show a little bit of of like my writing skills for for real skills and not working as a ghost writer for other social media platforms. And I, it's more like situational comedy. So like uh, situational comedy, um, I like I said, I love it crowd. Mm-hmm. You know, the office. I love characters who are kind of selfish. <laughs> In terms of comedy, like, oh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Or those characters that do something on on the TV or on their show that you enjoy, but you can't do yourself, you know, because because you have to be so correct and you just can't, but they release that energy for you. <laughs> so I'm working on that. And, and in my comedy, and I, I tried to do stand up, and, but more of stand up was more like spoken word slash stand up. And it's super hard. For me, that's the hardest that like being able to, it's literally like if you were naked in front of like the, the, audience because it, you are describing yourself your stories and, and and you have to be so so secure about it so i've done everything from from that so i'm I, I feel like i'm trying out like different things now with digital media of course you you gotta do little things but i don't i don't like the easy laughs of the of that comedy that is like, uh, I'm just going to show some cleavage, you know, and, <laughs> and make yeah. something funny. Haha. And that's quick and it's forgettable. I, my goal is to make something that it's legendary. Like it's, it's that it builds on something, you know, uh, it's just not, not just washable comedy or anything like that, but I'm, and I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and you're doing a great job at it. I mean, I love what oh. you what you did with the um, the the, the uh, Roma parody. Oh, you saw that? <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> that was uh, that was just hilarious, especially because I had just seen the movie, and so I totally got the references in there. Uh, but it was uh, it was just fantastic. And uh, did you write that that parody piece? Yes, I did. Oh my god. Um... Okay, so yes, I did. And I forgot to mention, I've always wanted to be in SNL, but I understand I have an accent and stuff. So, <laughs> well, that's, that, they need somebody that, with an accent. You think so? They have at least yeah. have a yes, senor, and she's really great. I, uh, I'm i glad she's getting a spotlight, actually. Yeah, they just need to mm-hmm. add add more people. <laughs> more of it, or get, yeah. yeah. But the women, they rock. I mean, Leslie, oh, she's great. Yeah. Well, have you, have you uh, um, like, auditioned for SNL at all or no. submitted something? I've been wanting – and sorry, we'll get back to the Roma question now. But, yeah, I've been wanting to go to the Second City School in uh, Chicago. Mm-hmm. I know L.A. is closer to me, but I don't know. I feel like uh, – or, or the Upright Citizens Brigade School, just to get a taste of it because – you can't audition to SNL if you don't have an invite or like you don't know anybody there. You can just come and be like, "Hey, I'm great." And I know one of their the people they have in cast right now. Like she was making really good uh, YouTube videos, so they called her and, and she's there. 
and I she's really talented, but um, but I don't know how they work as of today. You know, everything in, mm -hmm. in media and this everything changes so quick. So yeah, so back yeah. to Roma. Uh, I watched the film and I was like, okay, I had come back from working uh, in Living with Latinos. It was a watch Facebook watch show that had like 10 million followers. That's perfect. Work, we'll, we'll, the, talk, we'll talk about that also yeah. uh, very soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, I had I done like a contract there and moved back to my city where I live, where I'm staying right now. And I was like, oh, my God, I miss shooting, making videos. And Roma, I saw Roma. <laughs> seriously i woke up and i was like i need to create something you know that feeling you have and oh, like yeah. ah, mm -hmm. i need to do something because if not i will not be happy with myself <laughs> so i sat down and started writing um i need i needed another female and like more posh one and, and it was funny because i emailed i texted olga on a saturday morning like mm -hmm. at 7 a.m i was like olga i have this idea do you want to do a parody of Roma? This is the idea. And she's like, yes, I'll be there in your house at 1 p.m. <laughs> so between 7 and 1 p.m., I had to write it. <laughs> and I sent her the script, the pseudo script I had. <laughs> uh, she was reading in her, in her car, so sweet. And I went to um, the market to get the props. So it was really funny because at the time I was very sick and that was a sketch itself. I went to the market and I bought this. I was sick, so I got Theraflu. I got a cucumber. I got condoms. I got one glass of wine and wine. <laughs> so the cashier was like, what are you planning to do? <laughs> and I was like, it's for a sketch. But if it wasn't, what? why not? You know? <laughs> and came back home. I watched. She was there. Like, we shot it. I edited it. No, no. Uh, somebody, my husband helped me to edit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we just shot it with, like, the phone. And, oh, my God, my, my ring light. And just got it out. But I'm glad. people People really seem to to like it i don't measure i don't measure it by numbers you know but i got a lot of calls because of that of of, of that and and the response was was really good wow yeah no it was a, a beautiful piece of work i just i kept Thanks. watching it uh over and over again because i couldn't <laughs> believe how funny it was i was just laughing uh, <laughs> but imagine okay we did that with a phone and just a script on the phone imagine what we could do if we had more more like more cameras more lighting more more space for us más espacios para enseñar lo que podemos hacer and I was like why can't we do it in Spanish and read it and mm -hmm. I'm planning to do more I have more scripted so yeah. That's one thing I'm planning to do, like just not um, do Comadre Pancha, but also like do more comedy with myself as Joanna. Yeah, no, you're definitely a very busy person. I mean, you have all these projects, oh, okay. um, and 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 so now let's actually talk a little bit about your experience with living with Latinos because now you're getting some um, some funding and there's some more structure to it in a way, but. Um, how was uh, how was that experience uh, for you? That experience experience was really great. Um, last year, I was in January in San Diego, California, and somebody contacted me because they needed content. Like I said before, I was work I had like work with um, living with Latin. No, with me too. I had work with other uh, media, like social media, big deal kind of th people for Latinos but as a ghost writer so when this happened they contacted me because they had seen my Comadre Pancha videos and they're like oh you know she's small enough like she's not a, a big influencer she's a she has good comedy but doesn't have many following so it would be easier for them to grab and Okay, so every week I was flying from San Diego to Phoenix. Um, I, I moved there and because initially they invited me to do like some videos mm -hmm. 
some videos for them and then we would like for a Facebook watch show. So I left everything. I left my job. I left anything that I was doing here to go like, come on, if they ask you, do you want to work for a Facebook watch show that has this amount of followers? I was like, yeah. And you were getting paid for it. Yes. And when I first went there as a talent, they hired me as a talent and then they hired me as um, producer. Mm-hmm. So I was the video producer, like organizing everybody, a team and, and like just making videos. We were making to one point like uh, 20 videos a week. Mm-hmm. And we were a team of, let's say, seven actors. And I was acting, holding the boom, holding, <laughs> like, you know, uh, pr- trying to trait. produce, writing, like uh, writing. And at one point, everybody had to do that, you know, because it was such a demand. And it was a, a, a channel that bases on, like, putting a lot of content. So it was great. I got to meet a lot of amazing people I still have contact with and they have great talent from the editor to the lighting person to like the protagonist of the show to the creators of the show it was great like any uh, it, it was such an experience like it was very heavy I must say that but I I really liked it mm. no and and now um how I mean well how long were you there doing that for how long did the project last? The the project, their project is still going, mm-hmm. I believe. Uh, for me, my journey lasted from January until like September, October. Mm-hmm. And that was the same year? Yep. Okay. The uh, same and then- year, like move from town to town, like uh, like a lot of, it was, it was very rush, but very it was the adrenaline <laughs> yeah exactly no and then you're also now you're you're putting out uh you, you said uh 20 at least 20 videos a week or recording them at least and i mean that's that's a lot of not at least like uh that was the goal uh, sorry oh, got it said. yeah there is a lot we were at least at least we did 15 15 to 20 let's say a week yeah that is a lot Mm -hmm. oh man uh Mm -hmm. when did you sleep (laughs) because it seems like you were just working i didn't (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah you saw my stories right (laughs) oh yeah no yeah yeah we i didn't especially because i was like the producer but it's just something that i was never forced into like i was it was something that i liked because I wanted to perform, you know, like, oh, my God. I was always that kind of person, like, uh, why did you give me a name, not an A+. plus? You know, <laughs> if you ask me for 12, I'll give you 13. If you ask me for something, I'll give you more than that. So I, I didn't. I was working so much. And even when you sleep, let me tell you something. You get dreams about, like, <laughs> what's my next video about? Like, oh, I didn't call this person. Or, like, oh, I'm running late. <laughs> But I know it doesn't look very healthy, right? It doesn't sound very healthy, but but it was really fun, um, it, and it was a choice that I made. Yeah, uh, and and so when this ended, um, well, first mm-hmm. of all, why why did it end? Was it like a mutual departure? Oh Everybody God. just kind of had their own things to do, their own projects now, and or, or what? What was the reason behind uh, just, you know, ending? Because you had already moved Mm -hmm. for this. And, yeah, now all of a sudden. Look at you getting the tea. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, As I mentioned before, I don't, it has not ended. The channel is still there. It ended for me and for other members of the team. Uh, Last year, it was Facebook went through, and and not just Facebook, but like all social media went through like an ups and downs, and and there was a lot of layoffs everywhere, not just in Living with Latinos, in Me Too, and Huffington Post, and Vice, and uh, okay, secretly my favorite page was Super Deluxe, (laughs) (laughs) and they completely disappeared because of the layoffs that 
that social media, like I said, you have to be super uh, updating yourself and yourself. Like you have to update yourself daily. That it, not even daily, hourly, because things change so fast. So an algorithm can change your whole career, you know? Mm -hmm. So for us, when it changed, uh, they, they just told us they had four teams in living with Latinos. They had three teams, uh, two in Mexico and one in the U S so it was time for the team in the U S to, to, Close its doors. <laughs> yeah, to close its doors. And they were really kind. Uh, Luis, like, was was one of my, was my boss, the creator of Living with Latinos. Like, he was really kind. He was like, hey, I know, like, I had just moved there, lived for six months. and But he was like, oh, I'll help you with whatever you need. <laughs> yeah. But it was really hard for everybody. And, I mean, layoffs are not great especially when it doesn't depend because it's not that you're doing a bad job. It's not that you're not funny. It's not that you're not attractive. It's not that you're not likable. It's just that it is social media and like it, that as quick as it comes, as quick as, quick as it goes, you know? So in, I learned with that process that you need to have a very thick skin and you need to be persistent because if this is your dream, like, if, if your dream is creating or being a like a, a spokesperson or be a model or be an actress, whatever you want, like you have to be persistent because you're going to get kicked on the face. <laughs> mm -hmm. Regardless if it was something in animus, if it was something, whatever it is, like you're going to get, you, you're going to have like that skin of the elephant, you know, and you keep your feet grounded. You got to keep, tough and just listen learn from it and move on because if you don't move on like what what's gonna happen like where's your legacy like you gotta you gotta keep on learning keep on moving keep on creating of everything and experience and i still have a, a, a great contact with them and there's no I'm creating a project that I want to bring them back. Like people I met, for example, like Carla Marie, who's super talented, like uh, Terrence Lane. He's, oh, he's a great comic. Like his stand-ups are the best. And uh, Eric, like he's really great. So like I want to make something so they can be, be make an appearance. Because we, dude, we know everything about everything each other and know like how if one farts we know <laughs> who was what you know <laughs> like wh what a person's favorite food is like um you know we know we were together 24 7 for so long that i mean i think that was a show <laughs> a show about making a show <laughs> yeah there you go but, but it would be really fun and and i consider them my brothers and carlita my sister and Yesenia too like we were together all the time. So it was great. It was great. And I don't think this is it. You know, there's, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. No, and, and you, you, your group built such a, a fan base that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when, when you stopped doing the videos and the other oh, yeah. Latino teams came, came up mm -hmm. with their videos, you always would see these comments like, oh, bring back the original cast. They always thought, yeah. you, they always referred to you, uh, all of you guys as the original cast. The originals. Yeah, yeah. the OGs. Uh, and um, I mean, at the same time, you're, you're, you're playing in this digital playground, this digital space that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's still, you're st people are, I think are, are still trying to figure out how it works and, and what you can mm -hmm. do with it. And like you said, you know, one day it's here, one day it's gone. You, you don't know because there's no, yeah. there's no real proven formula out there that you can follow to the teeth that will give you success on digital every single time. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, uh, would you say that you consider yourself a pioneer in this field? Not at all. Mm -hmm. No, I, not at all. In this field of what? Oh, digital. And digital. Yeah, no. digital work. Not, not <sighs> uh, you know, skipping 
TV or anything else? Be your own person, um, do your own self promoter. I uh, I see. I, I saw it emerging. We started when I started my career in acting. Like we started a YouTube channel, and we were there. And I had to leave it, like I said, because I had to go to grad school and all that. I it wouldn't give me the time, but we saw it there. Um, I was lucky enough to to be called by Beatriz Acevedo, who's like the founder and president. I don't know if she's a person anymore, but like the, the founder of Me Too. We are Me Too, Me Too. And she saw something in, in, in me and us and my team. And we were like so grateful. But then I had to go to grad school and university and all that. And I saw how it evolved and I find myself like in between like, oh man, like this was so cool, YouTube and now Facebook. And then now it's Instagram stories, you know, mm -hmm. and podcasting. Podcasting is great too yeah. as well. And um, so I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm in the process of like learning and adapting learning and adapting, which is, I think is the greatest because you have to learn and adapt. Yeah. That's a great thing. about. So yeah. And that's a great thing about doing digital is that, uh, it keeps you on your toes because, uh, mm -hmm. it's ever changing. So you're changing Don't with you know. it. You're trying, <laughs> yeah. And you're trying new things and you're seeing what works and what doesn't. And, uh, I, you know, I personally think that it's a, it's a wonderful space to be creative. If you want to be, be creative, bam, like, you know, make your own YouTube channel, your podcast, your play around with Instagram and see what that, that, you know, mm -hmm. that offers. I, I have a, a friend of mine who actually was a guest on uh, one of the um, episodes of this podcast early on who mm -hmm. started a news, um, I don't want to call it service, but it was, it was like a, a news um, show, if you will, on Instagram. Uh, and, uh -huh. and, uh, it's just on Instagram. That's where you can get mm -hmm. it. So she's done, she does her own graphics for it and she explains, uh, what, um, what's going on. And then there's somebody else that, that I know, uh, that, uh, is doing news for broadcast, you know, for TV in Los Angeles, but on the side, mm -hmm. she has this, um, Instagram news show. She calls news, she calls it news quickies. Uh, and oh, th that's great. Yeah, yeah, and it's fantastic. It's it's uh, well shot, well lit, well edited. I mean, it's oh, yeah, and it's where it's going. And yeah. you need to adapt. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me tell you something. Yes. Did I did I interrupt you again? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me tell you something. My favorite thing I saw this weekend was um, the stories of Eve. Mm -hmm. Uh. The stories of Eve is a, is fate Instagram stories Instagram stories of a girl living in Hungary who was Jewish during the Second World War. So I told you I was a history MA, right? <laughs> but I yeah. love how um, they portray the stories uh, through Instagram, mm -hmm. like her whole history of like where she was living and it's very interactive and it's also you can see it as, as if she was seeing it you know mm -hmm. so it's a 13 year old girl I, th I believe it's 13 I might be wrong but like she's living in Hungary and it's and she tells you her through Instagram stories how she lived in the 1930s in Hungary during the second world war and the Nazis I was like Oh my God, this is how you adapt to tell a story, mm -hmm. you know, something so in such uh, with such importance as like, oh my God, the, the Holocaust, we all know about that. But how do you adapt into new social media? That's what I was looking at. Like, how do you adapt into the most popular one is Instagram stories. So like, I, I was impressed by that. Well, and, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I'm glad that you bring that up because... Uh, you know, one thing about these social media platforms is they they also evolve with times. And uh, I, I mean, do you remember the time when Instagram and Facebook too? I guess came out with the the going live feature, Insta Live, yeah. or Facebook Live, and it was the the rage. I mean, it kind of still is, but um, Instagram in particular. I mean, it just kind of really skyrocketed with all these cool little features. And now I think, yeah. 
uh, when they got bought by Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and um, and so now, uh, I'm glad that they uh, they made it so that you 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 can still do like these 15 second stories, but it's continuous. So if you shoot something that's a minute long, it just kind of you know goes in 15 minute increments but it looks flawless when you're viewing the story all together so now that opened up the possibilities yeah, highlights. Mm -hmm. yeah correct correct the highlights yeah you can go and watch it and because uh you, i'm not only intrigued by comedy but i thought it was a very inspirational way of storytelling like storytelling is the most important thing and you can go like you said and go look at their highlights and <laughs> and see like uh, go through the whole journey yeah whole journey exactly <laughs> well what's your favorite instagram feature oh my god you know what when you're making a story and the purple one that makes you feel like not <laughs> with your face <laughs> <laughs> like you're just like oh i'm i'm i might be pretty <laughs> <laughs> no no my favorite is what the one with the um, when you're making a beat oh. out of everything it can make anything look like a party like if you're writing or just washing your hands it makes it like go like Whoa! <laughs> and like it doesn't matter what kind of day you're having you put that feature on instagram you're like yeah i got this <laughs> what's yours awesome. um oh man well i i really like the um uh, the ability to put the a music or a song. Oh yeah, yeah. Because then, because mm -hmm. then you can you can uh, you can just tell if I mean if you mm. wanted to, you can tell uh, your mood without mood. saying anything. Yeah. Or, or if you want to throw people for a trip, just you know, do, if you're sad, put a happy music, or if you're so happy, put a really sad song, and see what yeah. happens. Yeah. You know what? That reminds me so much of MySpace. Mm -hmm. MySpace. I don't know how old you are. How old are you? Oh, I'm for, I'm uh, uh I'm the... I'm 20. Uh, <laughs> let's see, let's see. Uh, you know, after after you hit like you know 30, you kind of forget. I think I want to say 33. Yeah. I think I'm 33. Okay, so we're in our okay. You, la edad de Cristo, dice la comadre Pancha. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So yeah, so you had MySpace. Oh yeah. MySpace was about making friends through music. Right. Yeah. And I feel like uh, Instagram combined like the Facebook and MySpace together, and 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 just that ability that that you can put your song and make you feel in the mood that you are. You can also teach people about, like your music taste and stuff. Mm -hmm. I like that feature a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it has a ton of of great features, and I recently, you know, I I don't know if you have a uh, what's it called Snapchat. I don't know if you got into that. Or not. Yeah, I used to have it, but no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. It's the same response that I always give to. Yeah, you know, I used to have it, but now I I don't. No. But, and so, uh, I think it's more for like children, not children, like younger generations. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, I recently went in it uh, after. There's a lot of market there. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. I keep interrupting. No, There's a lot this of is market good. there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and I don't know how. Um, well, I you know I I I went in there finally after um, you know like a couple of years of not using, maybe even three years. But um, I I find out that they revamped the whole thing, so now Snapchat yeah. is is a little uh, better to use. There's still a lot of limitations mm -hmm. that I think Instagram you know has exploited very well and done very yeah. well, and um, and so when Instagram. Uh, started coming out with features that rivaled uh, Snapchat. I was like, "Oh man, I wonder." Now, now it's a war, you know, between between these two giants of uh, photo taking. Have platforms. you mm -hmm. have you seen yourself as a woman in Snapchat? They have everybody's going crazy these last like two days over um, how you can look a man as a woman through a Snapchat film filter have you done that uh, <laughs> have you seen yourself no the only time that i kind of saw that was when I, I i did the the face swap with uh no try mine. it now that you have it okay all right i will <laughs> okay this is your homework you have to post that picture on instagram how you look 
in your Snapchat <laughs> as a woman. Oh, man. I-, I can already feel the call coming in from my mom. Mikael, <laughs> what? <laughs> what is okay, going do, on? Do one of those uh, photo shoots that like, you're together and it's yourself. <laughs> so she's like freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh no but that yeah that's my homework from me to you <laughs> okay sounds good you got it no Talk i i separate. like that great i'm waiting for it <laughs> i like that snapchat tried to do a lot of these new shows you know like for example me too had the cholo guys remember those uh i vaguely Bigly. So they had this cholo guys and they Snapchat got it for quick stories, mm-hmm. which is now Instagram stories. See, Instagram is the best because it co- like combines everything. Yeah. Like all social media in one. So he started doing a show about like how to make things from like if, from nothing, from scratch. Like if you want to make a flower mm-hmm. uh, bouquet, he'll with whatever he has in his home, he'll do it in 10 seconds or so. Wow. And then there was the Cash Me Outside girl. Cash Me Outside. She has a show there too. Like uh, Snapchat started doing uh, real shows, their own shows, mm. and becoming their own platform, like like Amazon did, and like yeah. like that. So I'm, I'm really curious about that. I haven't explored it yet so far. Yeah, and then uh, Instagram kind of also has their own youtube like feature yeah you know the igtv yeah igtv yeah have you explored or played around with that feature yeah i think it could go it could do better yeah yeah that's for sure uh because usually you see looping the same video like they have to be more strict about that Mm mm-hmm yeah and with the content i mean (laughs) yeah yeah because sometimes like people who have a lot of followers to go to memes like they just put the same video going over and over so like if you're a platform for creators for creators i still think that youtube is the like the still the best way to go because it helps creator like it gives them it has so many rules but if you're a true creator you pull out through you know yeah people want to really see your content you get pull out through and podcasting but other than that if it's a quick uh something quick like yeah use (laughs) use instagram (laughs) facebook i don't know where you stand anymore please tell me (laughs) (laughs) i know yeah mark zuckerberg just uh i think he's the one that just said that the facebook should uh, split up yeah it, it was all because of the trials last year. Like, come on, dude. We're waiting. <laughs> Stop playing with me. Yeah. Uh, dedicating waterfalls on you. <laughs> Don't go. To- <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, Joanna. Anyway. We, okay, yes. Okay. So, going back to the uh, living with Latinos and that chapter yeah. ending in your life. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, one, mm-hmm. two, one of the things I'm curious Oh well, two mm-hmm. things. <laughs> One is when you receive the word that okay, it's 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 over. Uh, were yeah. you devastated, or did you take that as uh, a blessing in disguise and uh, to to you know kind of move, catapult you to doing other projects? <laughs> and also, my second thing is, <laughs> where did you go after that? What did, what projects did you uh, get into? <sighs> Oh my God, he loved the tea, huh? <laughs> uh, no, no. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Um, when I was notified that, what would you say? When I was notified that I, I was laid off, right? Yeah, or that, 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 that it had ended, that that chapter was over. <laughs> Oh, you know me. I'm a very emotional person and I'm a very creative person. Mm -hmm. So like, of course, of course I took it with them. I was like, uh, thank you very much because you always have to come on, have education. education. Like, thank you so much. Great. Let's do this. Okay, great. Thank you. But in my house, in my house, I was like, 
taking a bath of salt and just being in my tears, like just let it out, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks when you're laid off. I'm gonna be honest. Mm -hmm. Well, at least for me, that I'm an emotional. And I was just like just sleeping for a day, and then the next day I woke up and I was like, okay, bitch, what's your next move? <laughs> Because that's what I do. They, you let it all out. It's like you break up with a boyfriend who you like, mm -hmm. and and he just it, it can happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not actually. It's not like that. Like it's worst. <laughs> Me and and then and the next day we're like, okay, great, let's move on. And the first thing I thought about was like, where am I gonna go? I have a motto. If I have one motto in my life is like, don't focus on what, focus on how. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I'm a good producer because don't focus on what is wrong. Focus always on how to fix it. If I have a friend come in and like, oh, I'm coming in, but I have this. It's like, uh, uh, uh. like, how do we fix this? And if you know me as a person, like, you know, I'm the person to come like, how, 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 but So that's that's how it become, and then, then I just moved back to San Diego, and and that was it. Like, mm -hmm. so like getting back up was hard. I'm still feeling like Bambi getting back up. Like, hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah. that was it. Yeah. Uh, and and so let's talk a little bit about the projects that you are currently doing. Uh, mm -hmm. what, uh, what endeavors have you gotten yourself into now? Ooh, it's really fun. I am working currently in a web series and I am working with Amazon Audible. So, mm. so let's wait for that. Not only as a ghost writer, but also, uh, in a story with La Comadrita Pancha that you all like, hopefully, <laughs> with La Comadre Pancha. So, like, and, and reclaiming my time, you know, like, reclaiming my social media and see where it is going. It was, like, the best the best part of all this uh, experience is that you have a reset button for yourself as a creator, as a writer, as an actor, as, a, as everything, uh, and be like, oh, okay this happen okay reset situate yourself and reset what do you want to do you got a cathartic moment you know get get us a set where you want to go how you want to be how you want to be shown mm -hmm. and seen and and that's it that's but i'm working on those two projects and hopefully something else comes but i don't want to jinx it is there something that that you Uh, want to do in the future uh, you know, mm -hmm. that, that you haven't tackled already? Yes. I want to be writing um, film series and, and a film and series, uh, like a TV show or like a Netflix show or like, just like a, a series mm -hmm. and or films. I have like two in mind that I want to do, but like I said, um, I'm like... Um, I need time <laughs> because you work through your day job as a creator and then you come back and then you have to write and make all those together. And once you have the product, like you need money to do it, you know? So I hope I can, I can make those things happen. Yeah. The film and the web series. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's, uh, that's awesome. And I feel that you've, uh, you pretty much dabbled on, you know, a, a lot of, uh, titles and roles and positions in in you know within oh. a creative team is there is there like one role that you think you're stronger at yeah yeah understand this like if you're gonna be a creator a content creator you have to put on your many roles jacket your jacket of editing mm -hmm. your jacket of writing your jacket of acting your jacket like you have many roles But yeah, one the ones that I really like is production. I didn't I overthink things a lot, but <laughs> <laughs> but it's so it fits perfectly with that and this is why I'm good at it. And writing, just creating and and I'm a very good actor actually. So yeah, I think those three. Because mm -hmm. 
what why can you be multi-talented you know mm-hmm. i'm not gonna say i'm a very good singer i'm not but why can you be multi-talented i'm a person who knows to act who loves to write and create stories you can tell me anything right now like oh i have a an idea about this and i'll already give you a plot Mm -hmm. a second later like oh let's do this and this and and yeah do you think that uh, (laughs) you'll ever want to own your own business or or do you just want to uh you know kind of stay on the creative side and kind of let others handle the administrative side of course i want to have my own my because I want to be able, I'm going to be successful one day, let's say. I'm going to be successful and I'm going to be shining, you know? But I want to bring and help other uh, generations who want to speak their mind and share their voices the same way. Like, it cost me so much trouble to get where I'm going to that I want to ease it up for other generations. Mm-hmm. And I want people to share their stories because we all have interesting stories and we need to be heard about. We need to do it. And it, it doesn't matter if it's comedy. It doesn't matter if it's like a drama or something, but we need to know about our stories. And and yeah, that I, it'll be something that I want to do. Well, see, I th- like it uh-huh. does, go for it. It doesn't matter if it's my own business and my own production house, or it could be like of sharing my stories through a podcast like yours, or it could be sharing my stories through a scholarship. I think I would like to open a scholarship. Mm, that would mm-hmm. be amazing. Wow. I love that. And see, I'm, t- I'm telling like, I think you're a pioneer <laughs> because just like, I think so. just, well, yeah, because <laughs> Uh, all you need is like the horses and carriage, but no, like, you know, the, uh, uh, just like the people that came, you know, the generation that came, uh, you know, before us and they opened the door, I think now it's up mm-hmm. to this generation also to keep opening doors. I, I think it's, it's really up to every generation to keep opening doors and doors for future yeah. generation. I think, I think you're already doing that by what you do. And, uh, you know, you're a creative, you're a creative artist and, yeah, you know, you say you're going to be successful one day, but I think you already are. I mean, you got uh, you got all these uh, projects <laughs> that you've been see. part of. You've been you you've you've uh, you have your fans, you know, that that love and support you. You have um well, family of course. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, so I th- I think uh I, and this is why I wanted to to also talk to you for the podcast because I think that that your story is unique in many ways, but that also I think that just the steps that you've taken to get to where you are now, I think that's going to be an inspiration yeah. for somebody else out there that's listening to this that that wants to even follow in your footsteps or maybe maybe just doing any other jobs because I think what we talked about today applies to really anything that you're doing. Yeah, anything that I, anything that you create for me, it has to have a meaning. But this is my story, and and this is my comedy, and this is what I put out there. And this is what I think it's valuable to tell, and anybody can look at it different. Like you can make whatever makes you happy, and you want to create cool. There's might be people who consume it, but at least this is mine, and and we're working on it. Yeah, exactly. You know, one of the things I'm actually curious about. Uh, talking about just comedy is, uh, you know, what are your thoughts about uh, some of these comedians out there that are getting mm-hmm. too political with their comedy now to a point where it's not, you know, it, it's it's really not for the laughs anymore. So w- what do you think about that type mm. of direction comedy is heading for some? Are you talking about like stand-up comedians? Yeah. Or, or, even, or, you, or even like uh, late night talk show a comedian too. They talk shows. Yeah, I mean, um, and I'm gonna be butchered by this, but I one I love two comedians right now that are embracing politically correctness so well. One is Dave Chappelle, and the other one's Ricky Gervais. I love how they're embracing. Oh, and Sarah Silverman. Mm-hmm. Uh, through their so- her social media, she's not doing so much through stand up, but like through her social media, like she's like questioning things, you know. I believe like comedy is the basis of social criticism, like in 
smart comedy is the best. Like you can't, if you get it, like it means you're doing good in this society. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't take um, anything so literal. And we live in right now. We live in a spotlight that anything you said can be can be against you basically yeah, used against you in the like, court of public the inquisition of words mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and of course i'm for like equal rights forever i'm a feminist like i i i i'm i'm for i'm a progressive <laughs> i'm a feminist but also leave it a room to laugh a little and i think those two comedians and sarah like do it very well like um ricky gervais especially in his last time like he was really good at talking about it's not like what you talk about is the subject and making a laugh out of it like and i've i've gotten with la comadre pancha i did a video with about pride where she goes and interviews people and she asked a person who is bisexual she's asking like oh so what are you and she's like, I'm bisexual. And in her ignorant mind, she's like, oh, well, to me, that's a hoe. And they laugh about it. And that's a satire. But to other par- other people, they started, oh, I started getting bashed online. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's offensive. But my same followers who you would consider 80% of my followers are like male and usually are in the spectrum of LGBTism. And they um, they were defending the comadre, so they backed up. But anything you can say in comedy, it's very, it can be taken the wrong way. And it depends how much attention you pay on it. Yeah. But I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I think it's important. I, I, I don't think that uh, comedians should limit themselves. But you know, I was, I was listening. I so. Yeah, I was listening to a podcast from uh, Bill Burr, uh, who's this mm-hmm. comedian, very raunchy. Uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. He's, you know, he's funny, and uh, he's great. Yeah, yeah he's great. Yeah. And he said, he said that um, uh, when he goes overseas to perform comedy. He, he always has like this, I wouldn't say a fear, but just, a, you know, a slight concern that maybe the folks overseas won't get his type of comedy. But he says, he says, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, I, I went to Israel and I. I it's this year. Uh, yes, this year. Yeah. And uh, it says I, uh, I I performed the, the my stand up comedy over there and everybody was just laughing. I even said I hit. Exactly. Yeah, so it's like mm-hmm. I even made a Hitler joke and they were just laughing. Yeah. And he says, but then I come here to my country, the U.S. And so worried. Yeah. And, and it's, uh, you know, like everybody's getting so offended over every little thing. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. insane. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, I, I don't know when that is going uh, to change. But also, I mean, if you I have a theory, yeah, I want to hear your theory. If No, say what you were going to say. But I have a theory. Yes. I want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the worst podcaster. No, like, this is fun. No. <laughs> I have to hear. I think because it, this is a country that, I mean, you could be burned in your tongue for drinking a hot coffee and then McDonald's paying you for suing them. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a country that is like very. Like you can say or do anything because demanda, you mm-hmm. know, like you'd be sued for something. Like, oh man, this is so wrong. I don't know. But, but yeah, that's my theory because everybody's so touchy because you don't want to be wrong. Because here, like, you have a, you don't not only have the law, like legal, legal, real law, but you also have that um, social law being, is it like the modern inquisition? But, I'm in a, and I'm in a pickle because I love like, hey, people should be respected. Like people should have rights. Like this is wrong. This is right. You know. But at the same time, like, oh my god, he's just telling a joke. Take a f-ing joke. Mm-hmm. Like just like yeah, this, it doesn't mean that he will do it. But then it turns out, it turns out they do it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, oh my god, what is going on? But yeah, I don't know if that was a theory or whatnot. 
but yeah, I, I, I met a lot of comic friends who would like travel abroad and they're like, yeah, it's, it's easy yeah. to say. Oh joke. yeah. No, they're killing it, you know, overseas. It's just, uh, uh, it's a relax. Yeah, it's a whole, it's a yeah. whole different uh, atmosphere. Uh, that's for sure. From everybody that that uh, you know, I hear this from uh, either through podcasts. Oh, or, really? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's um, yeah. You kind of gotta gotta be careful on, on what the type of stuff you put out there because you just never know. You know, all these trolls seem to just pop up for whatever you do. There's so many things that I want to post online that I don't mm-hmm. because I'm like, Ugh, what if they say this? What if they say that? Blah, 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 blah. And then you have pre pre write written answers, you know, like if they say this, I'm like, like all that overthinking, you don't, why, why can't you just like, yeah, post it. And that's it. Like you gotta be, and I'm not, I'm not the only one. Like a lot of creators are like, Oh my God, what if I post this? That anxiety, you know, it builds up an anxiety on the creator. Like, I don't want to because they are going to say something. Yeah. And right now, uh, I'm, I I have reservations about posting certain things, too, because I know I know really? my mom is watching. Oh. Yeah. That's why I had a reservation about the chicken. The whole but, world is yeah. watching. Yeah. <laughs> but that's why I had, like, reservations about posting the chicken mole for a while. You know, the picture of it and sure enough like i said earlier in the podcast to get the call from my mom are you cheating on me with somebody else's mole (laughs) um so yeah i mean you just you get all all these crazy comments out there and you know i think um you you can either uh, you know accept that you're going to get these comments no matter what you do. I mean, you could put like the most innocent yeah, thing no out matter. there. Yeah. Or you can dwell on mm-hmm. it too much. I, I, I actually know people that have gotten off um, social media altogether because of comments like mm-hmm. this, just kind of, they gave up and they want to deal with it. But then there's others that I know yeah. that just kind of relish in it and they invite that type of criticism. Yeah, exactly. Because you know the saying, que hablen bien o que hablen mal, pero que hablen. <laughs> like, talk bad, exactly. talk good, but like keep talking. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And at the end of the day, the like conversation is what makes us great. You know, like having a conversation and sharing our one thing is a conversation and discussion. One thing, another thing is yelling about it. But like, I believe like conversation and talking about it and it, it's what make us great. Like sharing our points of views and saying like, "Hey, man, I don't agree with you, but cool." Yeah. Thank well, you. and then you. One thing is that. Yeah, exactly. And they, and you know what they say? Like they say that in the uh, well, especially like during Thanksgiving, this comes out all the time. But they say at the mm-hmm. dinner table, if you want to keep the peace. Don't talk about politics. Don't talk about religion. So you, you, you know what I yeah. do? I talk about politics and I talk about religion. <laughs> but so you're left alone at the table. <laughs> I, just the way I like it, so that I can get all the food. You know, it just scares everybody. Yeah, up. exactly. But, uh, have you? Have you? I do the same. <laughs> I, yeah, no, I was gonna ask. Like, have you gotten into a situation no, no, like no. that where uh, you all of a sudden, like, you start talking about something and then everybody just goes at each oh, other's throat? No. no. I don't, because <laughs> usually in my, with family or with friends? Uh, both. <laughs> ah, you like the drama, man. <laughs> I'm Mexican, man. I'm into chisme and drama. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, usually I'm like the, like, okay, calm down, because yeah. we don't want, like, I have enough. And, and family is like, oh, my God, calm down. <laughs> and they look at me to calm it down. So I just, like, oh, back up a little bit. But like with friends, no, I don't like instigating. Mm-hmm. You, you're, t- you're an instigator. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like instigator because then you have homework. Yeah, yeah like oh, you have to talk to one another, 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 another <laughs> and when you're like, oh my god, just chill. <laughs> There's so many real things out there, like like that you should be worried about. That if she wore the same dress, let's say, or something superficial. Because instigating, it could be something. Or you mean instigating like real talk? Uh, yeah. I mean, both, I guess. Because if you're trying to get real talk out of people, sometimes they just don't respond well. Real talk. They don't. Mm-hmm. They don't. Okay. I have a lot of friends who don't like to be in social media anymore because they feel like they have to teach everybody. Like, if somebody doesn't agree with you, 
like they comment or do stuff like, oh, I got tired because people think the wrong way. They're fighting with people online. Mm-hmm. And it's like, ah, no, like, I think it's, it's great that people have other opinions that you like it or not. That's one thing, but, but at least we have that freedom, you know, like to be able to communicate and stuff, but like, uh, you don't have to get angry. I used to get really angry about it and was like, Oh mm-hmm. no, this is how it is. And I'm going to show you the proof, but you're not in social media to teach anyone. <laughs> like, um, uh, like just you can't change it anyway it's just a comment and and that's it like a lot of people would support you and like you're welcome and but like but but chill yeah basically chill and be nice to people yeah exactly <laughs> yeah i always ask myself what would jesus do whenever i, I know <laughs> <laughs> but um uh, as we as we wrap this uh, episode up, uh, oh my god, I'm so regretting doing this. No, <laughs> why? <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> but uh, no, actually, as we as, so as we wrap things up, I just want to go back to family since we're we're we kind of touched a little bit on the family mm-hmm. thing. But uh, what was uh, the support like in your family when you decided to? Get, get into you know comedy and doing what you do more on a full time basis rather than you know kind of get a traditional job because you know like with Mexican parents like oh you gotta be a lawyer Mico or you gotta you gotta be a doctor you know like yeah. what so what 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 was the support like for you? Um, I'm not gonna say there was none because they don't know it exists like they don't know these careers exist mm-hmm. you know. Um, like my grandma moved from South Mexico into the border. My mom did the crossover. And I feel like now for me, it was like, oh, let's do something bigger. But I feel like she was very, she's like occupied with herself, like raising all these children that there wasn't many, like she doesn't understand it. Like, there was a moment when I invited her to a theater and she went there and she was like, oh, great. That's awesome. But still today, if you ask her, like, what is she graduated from and what is she doing? She'll be like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I just give her her food, make sure she's okay. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> you know, like, uh, make sure, like, the, como lo mínimo que se merece un hijo, mm-hmm. como, pero no mucho, not a lot about, like, oh, you should do this in your career. Because also she likes comedy that I don't like. So, but but the support is there. Not for my comedy, but the support is yeah. there. I don't know if I'm making yeah, sense. Yeah, no, that's... Like, she doesn't even know what I'm doing, but she supports me regardless of whatever I want to do. Yeah, she trusts that you're doing the best decisions for your life. And and of course, yeah. she'll be opinionated. Like, I made up. <laughs> well, uh, d- does she, or has she seen any of your comedy, your mom? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. When 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 she uh, when she saw Comadre de Pancha, what did she think? It's like, are you basing this on me? What? No, no, she hasn't. Actually, she hasn't said much. She's just like, oh, I got you a hat, and that's <laughs> it. Like, not very express, like expressing herself. My grandma, though, my grandma is like, because you know, I'm myself. I'm like very, like I always like punk rock, mm-hmm. like. Like I was like not the the pretty girl in high school. I was being like the alternative one. <laughs> and when she saw me dressed up as comadre, she was like, "Por fin te viste bien, qué bonita! You look so beautiful with the hats and stuff." I was like, "Oh my god, it's a character!" <laughs> and she thinks that's how I dress up. That was cute. that's awesome. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> I was like, oh, grandma. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they're supportive. Like, regardless of what I do, like, they will always have my back. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, it's good to hear. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I always like to um, kind of end things with uh, my guests' mm-hmm. pet peeves because we all got them. So, what are your pet mm-hmm. peeves? Pet peeves uh, when somebody ignores somebody. Mm hmm. Or, or me. Or you're talking about my, my, my personal. Yeah, your, your personal pet peeves. 
Ignoring somebody like, oh my God, I sent you an email. You just respond no instead of uh, of you just leaving it behind or where you're talking to someone. Yeah, yeah, ignoring basically. Mm. Um, yeah, or being disrespectful. Mm. But are you looking for something more shallow? Uh, well, now that you mention it, what <laughs> do you have one <laughs> that's very shallow? Uh, okay, when um, eating when you're eating and you're like, Oh, I hate that. Did you hear that? Oh, yeah. like you're eating. So- yeah. That's one of my, pet peeves. Like- <laughs> but yeah, but ignoring like one makes me angry is when you ignore someone like, Hey, no, <laughs> uh, no, that's great. They must got- Yeah. Yeah, no. Well, uh, you probably seen the ASMR videos then, uh, where people do that. It's called they call it mukbang oh, or mukbang. Yeah. <laughs> where, yeah. Where they, uh, they... <laughs> I haven't seen them oh. for a while, like for a long time. But like, I know what they do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean in public. Like, I don't mind. I know that's with a purpose, and yeah. like, I know the purpose it does. But like, when you're eating with someone face to face, and then they start doing that, and you're like, uh. Yeah, or like when they when they like spit out little pieces of food when they're, uh, <laughs> when they're talking while eating. <laughs> yeah, uh huh, and, and you no know, vuela, like it just flies out. Like, ah, <laughs> yeah, okay. I think I think we all got somebody in our lives that does that, and so if you know that person, you, just, you got what is your pet peeve? Oh <laughs> man, so I've said I've said so many on this on this podcast, but but the yeah. one that I. I I recently just got triggered by was actually when I listened to this other podcast and one of the people there kept saying, know what I mean? After every single sentence. Like me, my own. <laughs> no, no, I, mean, I mean, this one was just, uh, you know, I, I get to sometimes people say like, like, like a lot, you know, but then when you actually, See, when you add more syllables to it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Is that like, yeah, I know what you mean. You just said it. I understand. Uh, okay. But uh, so that's one. Okay. I'm going to say something. Yeah. Um, I know for this, you have to be eloquent and concise, but um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes we never, we never been asked so, such personal questions mm-hmm. that you're being a little bit thrown off, mm-hmm. you know? You know what I mean? <laughs> because uh, we asked about like a work. We're used to like, okay, what do you want to do? And be on point, on point. But when you ask about yourself and like your personal, like, oh, what is your bio story? Like that is something that we are not used to. So it's very, it's very raw. Oh, yeah. No, I totally understand that. What I'm talking about is uh, people uh, – during regular conversations out and about when they're talking about, let's just say something political or, or maybe something about, uh, uh, you mm-hmm. know, something they saw in the news. Mm-hmm. And so they're, they're just talking normally, but <laughs> they say, or what did you do yesterday? You know, what I mean? <laughs> uh, but if they, I mean, I understand it. Um, if, you know, if it's used sparingly, but like if you just use it often, after at the beginning and end of each single sentence, uh, it can get uh, it can get a little little annoying. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, luckily I have not had any issues with uh, any of the other guests that I've interviewed. Like so many, it, right. it, yeah. There's just uh, it's uh, that's why I like doing this format podcast because it's it's a long format, so I get to uh, learn more about the guests and also the people that are listening to this podcast know mm-hmm. and get to know that that guest. Uh, as well as a little bit about me, of course. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah I, I, when I when I came up with the title, a lot of people were like thinking, "Oh, uh, is it is it gonna have food? Like, is it a cooking show? Is it? Are you gonna are you gonna be uh, showcasing res- recipes or what's what's the deal?" We're hungry. We're hungry for success. Yeah, I I have a, a similar project going on, but like I wanted to name it something similar like this because. Because that's what we are. We're like hangry Mexicans. We're hungry for success. At least I am. What about you? Oh, I would say the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I, I can't stop mm-hmm. creating things. See, I got my Monday through Friday yeah. job, and then I decided to just create this mm-hmm. podcast because I was listening to so many podcasts on my commute, and 
uh, you know, a lot of the podcasts, they they were either lacking something that I really wanted to 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 be a component of the, those podcasts or or maybe they um, they were just interviewing a certain type of person. And, and so I was like, eh, you know what, I want to. I want to create a podcast Mm -hmm. that is a little bit more inclusive of everybody because I love telling stories. I love telling community stories in particular. Um, You know, that you're really great. (laughs) Well, thank you. It's just, I'm a very curious person. I think that's a a good trait to have (laughs) when you're working in the news industry. Uh, You got to be very curious. Uh, You never know. Yeah. And what's going to happen? Exactly. (laughs) But, you know, I, I just wanted to talk to, uh, people that are uh, doing amazing things that you may not necessarily hear about on the news on a daily basis or like these programs uh, uh, or, or Hollywood magazines where they interview, you know, like big name celebrities and stuff. Yeah, you know, like I, I know there's a ton of people out there that are doing great things, uh, whether you're a, a, a local news journalist uh, or – uh, you know, a content creator or, or a YouTuber yeah. um, or just any anything that you're doing that is helping, you know, society uh, in general mm-hmm. and help promote the next generation and, and, and help them promote that positiveness. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so. Yeah. I'm very honored to be in this spot. I invited to this podcast and um to the hangry mexican thank you so much oscar like uh i never thought i would be here but I, i'm so honored oh thank you. well thank you for for being here really appreciate you being my guest here loved it it was a great podcast i'm doing a little dance you can see right now <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I tell you? Isn't she a little fun to listen to? Oh, I just had a great time uh, talking with her and having her on this podcast, uh, talking about life and, and career and family and and a lot of other things. Uh, in fact, it was uh, such a great conversation that, that after the uh, episode stopped recording, we talked a little bit more off screen. And uh, we ended up recording a little bit more uh, just on something that was on her mind and she wanted to say. And here it is. Muchas gracias. Hola. Thank you to the Hangry Mexican. This is Joanna Gallo. Please follow my social media handles on Instagram and Facebook, Joanna Gallo, and also La Comadre Pancha. Muchas gracias, Oscar. See you next time. Hear you. Hear you next time. <laughs> <laughs> and I, of course, will provide the links to the social media accounts in the description to this episode. So be sure to check that out. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, please email them to hangrymexicanpodcast at gmail.com because I would love to feature some of those comments or questions on the next episode. Uh, and of course, if you loved this episode and if you just like the podcast in general uh you know rate it find us wherever you listen to your podcast and uh, rate the hangry mexican podcast um comment on it review it uh like it uh and uh, you know tell your family and your friends i always think that uh, word of mouth is probably the best way to get more ears uh on this podcast Uh, Again, everybody, thank you for uh, listening to this podcast. And uh, it was uh, a great way to kick off the month of June. So until next time, good night, good luck. Good luck.